Guruji, you do so much for this path behind the scenes that most people aren't aware of. Please, can you talk about what goes on and how much work has been put into building this path from scratch? Well, there is a lot more that goes on than people know. <laughs> there are always calls from seekers with different problems, this and that. To develop a path, one has to, in essence, prove their mettle. One has to hold the line against all the naysayers. When I started the online ashram, very difficult. People said it'll never work. There were attacks everywhere. If you're online, you can't be a real guru. Just unending nonsense daily for years, for years. It took five years of wading through the nonsense before it finally started becoming established. And this was daily attacks. I mean, very, very nasty stuff was coming. Very, very nasty things. So one just has to keep pushing through. And not turn back. We still get people on the net. Because I make myself very, very available to people. I wish more gurus would be out there and answering their own YouTube things, but they don't. They have a big organization and their students handle it, and that's it. They never have to deal with the nonsense and the drama. But I think that's a cop out. Okay. I would love to be able to hide away and sit in meditation all day. Just be out in the bliss states and this and that, but then I couldn't work with people. Okay. So what's done? I mean, I used to travel in a, in a, um, I used to have a motor home and I'd travel across the states to give satsang to people. I had one person that I went all the way across the United States to give them satsang because they requested it. I got there and said, they said, oh, I have a retreat to go to and you can hang around and then you can give me whatever you have to give me. And I'll give you 20 bucks for it. Unbelievable. What one goes through to give. Would the people she was going to retreat have spent the time to travel across the U.S. to give them a personal satsang and then have such rudeness. I've had another person when I was in Mexico, she's a great ama devotee. She's so humble, ama so humble, really. How long have you been her devotee? About oh, 20 years. Really? And how many times have you spoken with her personally? How many times has she spent time like I'm spending with you having lunch? Just sitting with you. Giving you your undivided attention. Never. And yet you're saying that Amma is so much more humble than I am. And 
what's she like when she's not up on stage? Oh, she can get very angry with people. Exactly. So what you're attracted to is her stage persona. It's wonderful. I mean, Amma is wonderful. She hugs everyone and gives them that momentary thing. But she's there and she's gone. Not daily, daily, daily taking care and allowing the people to come and call at any time. Any of the sadhakas may come or call at any time here. So what goes into it? All of your time, all of your energy takes to put the path together, to hold the center of the path. 